Hey everyone, welcome to my first devlog. Today, we're diving into the development of a challenging enemy for my 2D platformer game because awesome action-packed games should have awesome enemies that kick your ass whenever they get a chance. So, I created an enemy that will not only chase you relentlessly, but also bombard you with projectiles whenever you try to escape from it by climbing on floating platforms. So let's break down how I brought this fearsome foe to life that loves to beat your puny ass. So I am trying to create a demo version of my not copied original game idea to check if the game is good or I have created another dumpster fire. If the game performs well, I will turn this game from WebGL to an Android game with some extra features and maps. So without wasting time, Let's jump on enemies cough cough. Development. So, I have only created three animations for prototyping the enemy. Idle animation. Chasing slash running animation. Spitting projectiles, like you spit on cough cough. Now let's jump on the complicated part of game development, that is C-O-D-I-N-G, coding. As you can see, I have added two scripts, the enemy movement script and the projectile pooling script to the walking enemy. Enemy movement script makes enemy chase player, spits projectile at player. And a projectile pooling script is used for object pooling. If you don't know what object pooling is, then go watch a video on object pooling because it's one of the best ways to optimize games. Here are the components that are attached to the enemy game object. Now, let's deep dive into enemy movement script first. Here, I have enemy movement script. First, we have a few important variables. The player object variable store a reference to the player. The enemy move speed variable determines how fast the enemy moves. The projectile object variable stores a reference to the projectile prefab that the enemy will throw. The throw force variable controls the initial force applied to the projectile when it's launched. The fire point variable is a transform component that represents the point from which the projectile will be fired. The fire delay variable sets the time interval between projectile launches. This prevents the enemy from spamming projectiles too quickly. The ready to fire boolean flag indicates whether the enemy is ready to fire another projectile. The firing range variable defines the maximum distance at which the enemy can attack. The pooled projectile variable stores a reference to a pooled projectile object. The is player moving boolean flag indicates whether the player is currently moving. The fire delay cache variable stores a cached wait for seconds object used to delay projectile firing. In the start function, we retrieve the animator component attached to the enemy object and we also initialize the fire delay cache variable like shown on screen. Now, in the update function, we first set the x value of player variable to the player's x axis coordinates. Then we check a few conditions, such as whether the player is on a floating platform and whether the enemy is in range to attack the player, because I don't want the enemy to shoot from a long distance away, and the enemy will only shoot projectiles if the player is on a floating platform. The player movement script is a singleton script, allowing me to access the on-floating platform boolean to determine if the player is on a floating platform or not. By subtracting the enemy's x coordinate from the x value of player variable, we can calculate the distance between the enemy's position and the player's position on the x axis. This distance allows us to determine if the enemy is close to the player, in which case the enemy will shoot a projectile, if not, the enemy will continue to pursue the player's ass. To chase the player, I use the move towards method, but instead of the target position, I put the x value player variable in the x coordinate. And the Y and Z coordinate values are the same as the enemy's Y and Z coordinates because I only wanted to move the enemy along the X axis. I also used the update animation function to update the animation based on the conditions. Now, in the fire function, we subtract the player's current position from the enemy's position to obtain the player's direction, which we store in the DIR of player variable. Then I used the get pooled object function to store the projectile in the pooled projectile object variable. Following that, we will determine whether the pooled projectile object variable contains a projectile or is null. If it is not null, we will set the pooled projectile object slash projectile's position to the firepoint's position because we want to spit the projectile from that position. 
The projectile will then be activated and give an additional force as it moves toward the player. At the end of the function, we will invoke coroutine. Delay fire coroutine works as a timer that controls the enemy's firing rate. When the enemy fires a projectile, it sets a timer. During this timer period, the enemy is cooling down and can't fire again. Once the timer reaches zero, the enemy is ready to fire again, and here the timer value is equal to the fire delay variable's value. To make enemy always face toward player's direction, these line of code are responsible. This is how I have set up my animator. There are two boolean first is firing and other is idle. Transition from running state to firing state has no exit time and condition is firing boolean should be true. Transition from firing state to running state has exit time of 1 and condition is firing boolean should be false and idle condition should be false. Transition from firing state to idle state has exit time of 1 and condition is firing boolean should be false and idle boolean should be true. Transition from idle state to firing state has no exit time and condition is firing boolean should be true and idle boolean should be false. Transition from idle state to running state has no exit time and condition is firing should be false and idle should be false. Transition from running state to idle state has no exit time and condition is firing boolean should be false and idle boolean should be true. I'm not showing the projectile pooling script in this video because it's already too long. And the projectile pooling script is simply a normal object pooling script that creates multiple disabled game objects of the desired prefab. In my case, I wanted a projectile prefab for my enemy. And if you want the projectile pooling script, leave a comment and I'll give it to you. Alright, that's a wrap on this video. Until next time, keep coding, keep creating, and most importantly, keep your sanity. Or don't. I don't care. Just kidding, kind of. See ya.